patients. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to thank the organizers because it's great for me to speak at this conference. And I will present you with our results of treatment of neuroblastoma girls on the protocol in B2004. Topicality to it has been mentioned repeatedly before 2008 in our center. We have been using different protocols. The protocol and the uh, 19 ENS9 INS for a median uh, risk group. Uh, uh, 29 and B1 1999 for high risk group total survival of patients in the Republic was uh, 56 plus minus 4 percent risk groups were split in the following way low risk uh, uh, stage 1 2 and 4 s uh, interim uh, prognostics uh, stage 3 and high risk for uh, stage 4 is uh, 10 year survival was 86 18 21 percent then correspondingly since 2008 we have been using the announced site the protocol of the German group NB 200 uh, 2004 M because there are our modifications it's risk adjusted and the assessment of results accomplished for us is very important clinical task all the time we accumulated 190 mm -hmm. protocol on absorbed patients absorbed patients are those patients who on who due to medical reasons protocol was not done the age was between four days to ten days median of the age 1.65 36 percent were children under the age of one year uh, stages patients 1 41 percent stage 2 18 percent stage 3 24 percent stage 4 and 41 percent of patients uh, for stage 4 s four percent the split in risk groups same as in europe in this protocol so observation group 46 percent uh, 13 percent interim risk and 41 percent high risk uh, the criteria of the protocol you all know it uh, uh, actually, we have been dealing with that. You know those criteria pretty well. Our modifications, unfortunately, mindful of the fact that in Belarus Republic, uh, the uh, the AMBG sensography is not possible in our country because there are very few patients like that and very high cost of treatment. Not all these patients before the beginning of specific therapy were going through MABG to apply MBG therapy for treatment for them. It, was, it became possible since 2006, uh, 16, thanks to Russian Federal Center of X-ray uh, Ringology, and thanks to Professor Fermi, and so we are doing that option. Uh, uh, instead of Vindazine, we use Fincristine because Vindazine is not run, uh, registered, and we didn't have randomization for experimental induction in aid uh, and uh, aid block. Nobody was randomized. Total survival in this protocol was 72% event-free survival, 68% cumulative frequency of recurrence, 25% and uh, uh, mortality related to toxicity, 5.8%, depending on risk group, as event free uh, survivals for standard group 93, interim 8, if a high risk group 38. And you can see that in most part, the problem of high risk group uh, it's validated, it's high cumulative development, uh, frequency of recurrence development. We are in line with the data from European groups without immunotherapy, we achieved the same results. As you can see from this slide, that is our data is comparative uh, to the data of European groups. We assess prognostic factors impact upon the survival, clinical factor is age, 12 months, uh, uh, children under uh, 12 had uh, better data on event-free survival on, on cumulative frequency of relapse. And now, actually, this is the age, 18 months, same trend as the uh, data, statistically valid. And in our no stratification for patients in high-risk group, we have been using cutoff of 18 months. And uh, uh, make an amplification that retains this prognostic value of patients without amplification 
Asian, 75% of survival without J42 due to increased number of relapse. Uh, one P dilation as an event for patients with adverse events is retained as very prognostically important data is valid. Patients with one P dilation, survival for them is much worse, and the cumulative frequency of relapse is also higher. Um, uh, 11Q deletion is also important. ANMIC has got higher prognostic uh, weight, so the availability of those deletions were only assessed in patients with uh, negative uh, tumor, depending on localization and uh, retrosternal um, uh, region or in uh, adrenal glands is higher than in other localizations like sternum, uh, neck, pelvis, and depending on the stage uh, and a local stage, stage four, high level of survival uh, and net four metastatic uh, stage, everything is much worse here, depending on just the logical type on Shimada, classification B9 type is much higher, uh, survival is there, and uh, non-B9 type is only 49%. We did multi-factor analysis of those risk factor and prognostic value was retained metastatic form of disease, no complication and adverse yeah. Histological tape on Shimada classification age is uh, not important here anymore. And we assess the volume of surgical intervention in other groups. It had strong impact. Those patients for whom only biopsy was made uh, were in much higher risk. Implementation of this protocol improved uh, uh, total uh, event-free survival in children with neuroblastoma and Belarus. Results are comparable to German uh, analysis. Uh, German studies, one-factor analysis identifies those factors. It's age, localization of primary uh, tumor, histological types of classification of Shimada, and the availability of other amplifications in multi-factor analysis more important were the following unbenign fact, the volume of surgical uh, intervention, metastatic form of disease, uh, and adverse histological types of schematic classification. Standard risk group, 45% uh, of patients were in that risk group, mostly children under one year of age, uh, 50% and life-threatening symptoms were in 34% of those children. Total survival was 97%, 93% Event free survival, uh, death, uh, uh, mortalities, hospital mortality, three after chemotherapy, there were progressions, but patients with relapses are alive, they are curable. Uh, just mortalities were in patients with very heavy true symptoms at the moment they were administered to the site. Uh, uh, stages of uh, disease for this benign group. Actually, uh, the stage did not impact survival, availability, or the absence of life-threatening symptoms uh, were impacting uh, the event for survival, but not due to relapse, but due to toxicity. Those patients who initially had a uh, severe two symptoms uh, had a lower profile of event for survival. Uh, the volume of uh, uh, surgical intervention in this benign group uh, did not have prognostic value, although there is the trend for better in survival of patients with total uh, removal uh, resection, but the data is not statistically valid. Depending on the therapy, of course, it's quite consistent to conclude that patients without surgical risk factors who, whom the uh, surgery could be done right away and the age was corresponding, they had got uh, very good survival, 98%. Those who had those symptoms and polychemotherapy was to be done on them. Actually, uh, their uh, is eventfully uh, survival was slow. Depending on ploidy, triploidy tumor had better data on survival, and they didn't have recurrences. But due to the fact that the groups were very small, it's not statistically relevant data. Standard risk group has got high indicators of 
total event free survival of 57% children under each one year prognostic value for survival is not there, uh, but the stages diploidy of tumor cells surgery was lower in the patient in those patients who had life threatening symptoms of the moment of diagnosis, but not because there were more progressions and relapses. Interim risk group is rather small, 13%. Uh, total event-free survival is rather high. For, uh, there was one relapse for mortalities related to therapy uh, stages, stage four. Patients under age were included here without total transplantation grafting have got high level of survival and inclusion of the patients into this group did not worsen the quality of treatment. Uh, the uh, causes of deaths of those patients, one compartment syndrome, two generalized uh, infection, one patient, a systemic polyorgan insufficiency, sepsis, there are problems in follow-up therapy, especially in children under age of one year. As to the same way infection, now the situation is better because those uh, uh, um, um, uh, so those platelets actually, uh, now we're dealing with them, there's no big problem. And those were very small patients under age one, stage four, replacement transfusion is needed and then uh, uh, there is the neuralized uh, central infection. Depending on the ploidy of the tumor cells, no difference as well. The surgery had a beneficial effect. The patients with total and subtotal resection of the tumor had better uh, data in terms of survival. I'm short of time, so I won't voice some of the conclusions. High risk groups. Overall survival, 43%, uh, uh, even free survival, 38%. Mainly the survival is decreased due to cumulative incidence of the uh, relapses development. We do not have trust with the data, but there's uh, the last patient that had the relapse. That's why the curve uh, went down. Uh, previously, we had the uh, trust with us. We assessed uh, the age over 12 months, uh, uh, under 12 months and 18 months. Uh, amplification and deletion, uh, none of these parameters uh, impacted uh, in fourth grade to even free survival. The volume of surgery, you see that patients with total resection of the tumor had uh, uh, better data in terms of overall survival compared to those with biopsy. The difference was even higher with patient, uh, for patients uh, with the R0, R1, the event free survival was 53% and only 20% where uh, we had only biopsy. Depending on localization of metastasis in bones and uh, uh, bone marrow, uh, we had uh, higher cumulative um, level of relapses and hence uh, lower overall survival quite naturally response to therapy. Those patients who had uh, uh, complete uh, uh, and partial response, event free survival amounted to 59 with stabilization 20 without any response, all of them died certainly. And post-transplantation survival depending on the response for those who reach this transplantation with complete and very good partial response 56 percent, partial response and stabilization 26 percent. Multifactorial analysis, trustworthy uh, impact were produced by uh, response to therapy, uh, localization of metastasis and uh, presence of metastasis in bones and bone marrow. Having analyzed this situation last year, we developed uh, new approaches to treating patients of high risk group. Now, our criteria of high risk are as follows. First stage with the MIC and amplification is removed. Before we had four patients, all of them are alive, everything is okay, but they have a toxic effect as uh, uh, hearing disorders, uh, hyperplasia of the liver. So knowing uh, this data based on literature and own data, we treat them uh, based on intermediary risk group, high risk group. Uh, stages two, three, four with the MYC and amplification, stage four without uh, MYC and amplification, and stage four uh, without this amplification in case of uh, um, um, 
unfavorable uh, histology DNA index uh, uh, of one. Ultra high risk uh, atypical cells in the bone marrow after induction, no complete or partial remission uh, based on metastatic foci. Three uh, positive foci after the completion of the induction. We carried our studies in terms of minimal residual disease and decided to use this criteria for stratification. Those patients who after induction had uh, minimal residual disease based on two methods, FOX2B and uh, tyrosine hydroxylase over 0 0.002. These patients also are allocated to the ultra high risk group because based on our data, survival is near zero in this group. Denise mentioned this already that CPM group has detected that sulfan melphalan has certain benefits when used for neuroblastoma patients. It's our algorithm of treating patients with neuroblastoma of high risk. The same induction, then we assess response after induction if the patients with second and third stage and um, MYC positive, they have transplantation with blue mel. If uh, they are MIBG positive and fourth third stage have uh, this positivity after induction, they have MIBG therapy, then tandem transplantation. And this is high dose TT, also fun melphalan intravenously. MIBG negative patients by the end of the induction have uh, double tandem transplantation immediately after induction. Those patients who have centrally localized neuroblastoma and uh, for whom even if it is technically possible to completely resect the tumor, sometimes the timing of chemo uh, impacts uh, very much the timing of chemotherapy. So we decided to leave this option to after the second transplantation in, in order not to violate the chemotherapeutic uh, timing and consider the surgery after we complete the second daughter transplantation, we decided not to use Dracutan anymore. Those patients who belong to the ultra high risk and have no partial uh, remission after the end of induction, two additional blocks of TVD. If at least partial remission is achieved, they go in accordance with the same branch of protocol. If not, we withdraw them from the protocol and they have individual therapy. Because this practice shows both our practice and global practice that patients who have not achieved at least partial response prior to auto transplantation, um, there is no need to perform auto transplantation. They die anyway. And there is no answer uh, anywhere in the world what to perform for these patients. And I wanted to thank uh, all our team and invite you uh, from October 31st to the 1st of November in our center. We'll have a, a conference that we have once every two years, pediatric oncology conference. So you're welcome.